Hello, I'm JW. And hello, I'm Paul Meenan. And we'd like to welcome John Moore to the E5 YouTube channel. Yeah, thank you very much, Paul. Today we're going to be looking at RCDs and specifically what happens when you put DC through an RCD and how that will affect its operation. Here's the test rig. Uh, just a quick overview of what we've actually got here. On the right there we've got a mains lead coming in and it goes through an isolating transformer. That's just there so that we don't trip any other RCDs on the system obviously when we're doing the tests. And we've actually got two separate devices in here. At the top left we've got an RCCB. It's a type AC and it's a 30 milliamp device. So it's a very common style and it's pretty much the one that is installed in most consumer units and has been for several decades. And on the right there we've actually got a circuit breaker with a shunt trip attached to the side and then just below that is a earth leakage sensor. Those three things combined are equivalent to the RCCB so here they're actually in three separate parts. Now below those we've got a DC power supply and a switch at the bottom where we can select either 50 milliamps or 250 milliamps and an off position in the centre so we can put either of those currents through either the RCCB or the earth leakage sensor to see what effect that has on their performance. And at the bottom left there we have a test socket where we can connect our RCD tester and there's also a switch there at the bottom so we can select either the RCCB for doing the test or the earth leakage sensor and the shunt trip on the right there. Now first of all we'll just show that this uh, does actually work with a test button so that just trips uh, pretty much as you would expect. And we've plugged in the RCD tester here and we've got it set up to a 30 mAh RCD, which is what we have here. I'm just going to on the times one setting. And again, this is an AC type, so again, that's what we've selected. And we're actually on the zero degrees here. We could do the 180, but I'm just going to do the zero for this, as it doesn't particularly matter in this particular case. So if we test that, let me see, it trips there, 28 milliseconds, so absolutely no problems with that. And what we can also do is just do a ramp test, see what current it's actually tripping at. And again, this is a 30 milliamp RCD, so we should see that at just below 30 milliamps. So there we are, trips there at 27 milliamps, so again, absolutely no problems with that at all. So now we've got exactly the same setup. The only difference is that we've actually injecting 250 milliamps of DC through the circuit and through the RCD. And we see the current uh, shown here on this meter. So let's just try the test button. Uh, as you can see, the test button is doing absolutely nothing, so uh, clearly some kind of problem there. And let's also do the uh, test on the RCD tester. Again, this is just the normal times one test. So you see that's a fail, so it hasn't tripped at all, and the time there is greater than 310 milliseconds. Now we'll change this over to the ramp test. Bang on, gets 30 mm RCD. Let's see what current it uh, trips at. So again, greater than 33 milliamps, and again, it hasn't tripped. So uh, clearly this is now completely useless for its intended purpose. Now I've changed this to uh, a 300 milliamp setting. So let's uh, see what current it will trip at. But anyway, that's 10 times greater than the uh, actual current this thing is supposed to trip at. So let's try the test there. So it has tripped but it took 210 milliamps rather than the 30 that it was intended to do. And bearing on this is injecting just 250 milliamps of DC, which of course is actually quite a small current in the general scheme of things. Now I've got the same setup again, but we're going to do 50 milliamps DC being injected through there. And let's just see if the test button works. Now the test button does operate, but uh, these test buttons do put a fairly high current through there, so uh, the actual coil inside the RCCB is not totally saturated. There is still enough uh, spare there for the thing to actually trip on this test button. But of course, test button isn't really the uh, definitive test of that, so we use the actual RCD tester again here, just on a normal times one there, and uh, see what we get. So again, that is actually a fail. The device did not trip within the 310 milliseconds. And if we do the ramp test there, again just on the normal 30 milliamp setting. 
So see that it uh, still doesn't trip and we've applied greater than 33 milliamps to a 30 milliamp device. So although the test button indicates that it's working, the actual uh, test equipment of course shows that it's not working within its specified parameters. So let's just do a ramp test and we'll select the next hot range which is 100 milliamps. I just thought it didn't trip on 33 so let's see if it will trip on this one. So it has tripped but again it took 70 milliamps massively more than the 30 milliamps that it should do. And being well, that's only a 50 milliamp DC being injected through there. And again, 50 milliamps is pretty small in the world of DC items. Now what we've got in this uh, setup here is a two pole circuit breaker here. And on the side of it, we've got a shunt trip. This is quite a straightforward device. It just receives a signal from this here, which is a earth leakage sensor. And this is just basically a mechanical thing which will trip off the circuit breaker once this thing detects that the current has been exceeded. And uh, just with an R as with an RCZD, we can use the test button. And again, that just trips off as exactly as you would expect. So we've got 50 milliamps being injected through here of DC. And we're gonna see what the uh, tripping time is here. And uh, just gonna start the test going. So tripping time is 30 milliseconds. So again, that's plenty fine. That's uh, well within the actual requirements. And that's in complete contrast to what we saw previously with the normal RCD, which of course didn't actually trip at all. And I'm just going to do a ramp test to see the current that this thing will trip at. And being in mind previously with the normal RCD, this was way off and uh, clearly was a fail. So let's see what we have with uh, this device. So see there, 27 milliamps, which is perfectly fine for a 30 milliamp device. Now, just as before, we can uh, inject 250 milliamps of DC. We can see that here on the meter. And again, that's going to go through the uh, circuit we have here. Now, of course, previously with the ordinary RCD, that did not trip. Let's see what happens this time. So see that trip there, no problem. So this uh, sensor here can determine the fact that there is some DC there and still actually trip under the correct conditions. And just as before, we can use the RCD tester. So just as before, this is a times one test on a 30 milliamp. So there we go. So that trip within 51 milliseconds. So again, that's well within the requirements. So again, no problem with that. And as before, we do a ramp test. So again, this is the tripping current that is required. And again, we'll just start the test there. So see the device has tripped there. Now the current it's tripped at is 33 milliamps there. That is actually a bit too high. It's uh, supposed to be, of course, 30 or below. However, this particular device is fairly old. It was put in, in this case, in 2013. And for the last six years, it's been uh, banged around in various places all over the country. And the uh, side of it has actually started to come away. So uh, not too surprising that it's slightly out of specification. But uh, the point is with these that the, this is really one of the only devices that actually works properly with DC current on the circuit. As I saw there, the normal AC type RCD simply uh, doesn't either work at all, or if it does, it takes far too much current to actually trip. Now this particular device, which is made by Blackley, is specifically designed and intended for use in circumstances where there is likely to be DC current, and uh, hence that's uh, why it actually works properly in this situation. And if you want some more information that you can see it on their website. Now you may be wondering where DC is going to come from in your average installation. And unfortunately these days it can be from a vast variety of sources. Pretty much any kind of electronic equipment is going to have a DC power supply inside. So any kind of problem or fault on an electronic device could result in DC being applied to the mains wiring. And that could be something as simple as a phone charger, or in fact any kind of power supply in pretty much any electronic piece of equipment. And then of course that's before we even get into things such as solar panels and electric vehicles, both of which use DC at high current. So that is pretty much it for this video. There will be more videos on this channel about RCDs in the future. Until then, thanks for watching.